Well, hi there, Moose Duke fans. This is Saturday evening, August 21st, uh, 2021. And this is going to be a real divergence from any of the videos I think you've seen me do before. Uh, most of you have probably heard me make a reference in some of my first videos to uh, my son Cameron. He uh, was a grandson that we adopted when he was three years old and uh, been living with us ever since. He'll be 21 in November and he's got a nice little girlfriend named Miranda and they are about to have their very first baby. In fact, they're going in Monday, which is the 23rd, to have her induced. So about two days out. Now, I think I've mentioned in some of my other videos back when I was in my teenage years, early 20s, I used to do some leather craft and stuff. And it's like, hmm, okay, I got a new granddaughter coming here real soon. I want to rekindle my uh, affair with leather work. So what can I do? And when I was working on my concoction for holding that uh, Alaska chest holster down, I was at uh, Candy Leather here in San Antonio. I was looking around at some of their leather kits, most of which I'd made when I was, you know, 12 to 18 years old. Uh, but I saw one that kind of caught my eye. Uh, didn't buy it at the store, but I did go online and order it. Uh, you know, what, what's one of the most important things to do for first little kid? Baby shoes, right? So, I bought this kit. It's got two little baby shoes in it. Uh, I'm going to walk you over to the bench here in a minute. I made the first one already. Uh, and I'm going to show you the process. It doesn't take very long. Uh, it's a great, fun little project to do. Uh, especially if you've never done much leather work before or anything uh, to get started in. Uh, you know, you don't need any real fancy equipment. Pretty much uh, everything other than an X-Acto knife that you need to do this is already in the kit. So, uh, it's just a matter of reading the instructions. If you've ever sewn a button on, you can make yourself a pair of baby shoes for your first child or your grandchild. Uh, you know, I got a bunch of grandkids, and I never thought to do this for the others, and so my apologies to all of you. I'm not playing favorites just because this was going to be born and living in my house for a while. Uh, it's just the way life hit, and I'm getting back into doing this stuff. So I hope you all enjoy this. Come meet me over at the bench. All right, we're back at the table, folks. Here's the completed shoe. And this is how simple this is. You've got the base piece. The one that builds the upper body. You've got a piece of pink leather since she is a little girl. It did come with blue and neutral, but in this case, and then waxed thread and the needle. All this comes in the kit. Now, what you do have to do is this waxed thread comes one great big long piece. You have to fold it in half and cut it. And the same thing with a little piece of red leather. Now I'm just going to go over the basics in the instructions. This is the bottom of the shoe right here. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Get that out there. Okay. That was, all the holes are pre-punched. Right here is hole number one. All right, the center hole on the bottom side. That's where you start. Here is your piece that makes for the upper of the shoe. Uh, I will scan the uh, instruction sheet uh, as part of this. And, you know, I, don't, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to tag this as suitable for children or not. Uh, I've never done one that way. But for parents, you know, if you've got kids that I would say are anywhere from 10 years old and up, and I think that's what this was rated, 10 or 12 and up, uh, something they can do if you want to get them started in making a little bit of leather craft or you can do for kids or grandkids on the way. All right, so we have the base plate in place. Now on the back here, and I've already done this, uh, let me get this on here for where it'll show. Do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, basically what you do is you count 29 holes in from here and mark the hole next to it 
and verify starting on this way come down and this should be number 29 this is your center hole so this is where you start with this piece now the way that I start this and let me see, I'm going to try and zoom a little bit more here uh, if this gets to be too blurry or whatever uh, I apologize you start and come from the top of the base piece down and you want to leave a tag end uh, three or four inches long. Now, we know where our base, our number one spot is. So what we're going to do is come through here, come down, and come back through that same hole. And then we basically just do a loop stitch all the way around this thing. Pull it, yeah, back it out a little bit there so you can see. Get in the right position, pull it through. So anyway, well, you know, well, just make some chit chat while I'm doing this because otherwise you'd be boring. My buddy Jim would be going off on me because I probably wouldn't put any music in the background on this. Uh, but yeah, you know, I have got a boatload of other grandkids. Uh, Elizabeth, my oldest granddaughter, is she just turned 20 last month and be starting her junior year at uh, University of Texas Dallas. Got herself a really nice boyfriend, Addie. Uh, I've met him. He's another super smart nerd. That's basically the way Andrea, my daughter, classifies it as you know, two, two nerds getting together. It was a perfect match. Uh, the great kids through my son Brian. Uh, he's got five kids. Uh, I don't get to see them very often. Uh, when I do, it's usually up in Dallas at my ex-wife Carrie's house. Uh, she and her wife will get the kids for a long weekend or something, and I go up and visit them. Uh, but Karis, his oldest, just started her senior year in high school. <clears throat> and the youngest, the twin boys, I think are probably getting close to five. You know, because of COVID, I haven't seen them in a year and a half. And they were about three then. And then through uh, my stepson, Travis, out in Utah, he's got two kids, two boys. And then this little girl is going to be named Ezra. I... I don't know why they picked the name you know it's their choice uh, Cameron said you know one of the reasons is you know it's a unilateral name so they didn't know when they picked the name whether it's gonna be a boy or a girl so that way it works no matter which way it goes so you know whatever works for them and for anyone who's gonna ask <laughs> no I don't know if they're going to uh, Alaska or not and they haven't made a decision yet either so you know it, it's whatever it is it is whatever it isn't it isn't so uh, that's just kind of how things go Cameron really likes it here he's got a lot of friends here so it's one of those whatever So at this point, you know, uh, I'm going to have to stop here. This thing keeps getting caught on here. I had to elevate this up on the box of the stuff I got from Tandy to be able to get enough zooms. Or as my buddy that I watch a lot of his shooting videos, Hootie Hoo, Adam, calls them zoomies. Of course, here in the San Antonio area, when you refer to zoomies, you're talking about all the Air Force people. But... Like I said, I'm just making chit chat till I get to the point here where I have to do something different in a minute. Uh, all right, let me see when this gets to at which point that happens. At hole number 20, align the last hole. So means we have to come back here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that would be hole number 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So that hole right there, that's one, two, three, four more holes. At that point, 
Then we have to do a little crisscross over. So let me get four more of these done. And this is just like doing carpentry work. You know, the old measure one, measure once, cut twice. Well, this time, it's read the directions twice before you do it once. So that was direction number one, reading. All right, so back in 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. Read it one more time. At hole number 20, align the last hole number 29 on the left side of the body piece with hole number 21. So, again, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. So I go through one more. Then we take hole number 29 on this P, on this end, which goes with hole number 21. So now we're going through three layers. But again, it's still, everything's still the same process. Get out of there. Keeps catching on that. And I don't pull it too tight because I know I've got a lot of room here to make this work. But, uh, you know, as far as I'm not going to run out of thread before I get to the back end. And when you get to the back end of this is really the trickiest part of the whole process. And that's tying this off inside the shoe. Because if you remember, I had that little tag end that I left way down in there if you can see it. All right. So when we get to the end of it, then we have to tie that off with the end, this end of the thread. And tying that knot inside that little bitty shoe with big old arthritic fingers like mine, at least for me, it's the most challenging part of the deal. You know, may not be for you folks, but you may not have to deal with that kind of stuff. Am I still back here? Okay, still you can see what I'm doing. And one thing I'm going to do when I take this back in the house, but it'll be after I finish it. And I'll show you that I'm going to put a little bit of glue uh, inside the flaps that fold down just to make sure they don't come undone. The way they have it done seems a little flimsy to me, so all of those of you who know me know I over-engineer and overdo everything. Okay, so now we're back on track. We're back down to going through one layer of leather. And this leather for the upper of the shoe is really soft. The piece for the bottom is, is hard and rigid. You know, this is not intended for a walking baby, okay? This is just nothing else. It's like a lot of other baby clothes and things. It's just to for looks and, you know, show off a little bit of pride in your, your kid or your grandkid. Something that you made for them. You know, if their parents hang on to it till they get to be adults and I'll be long dead and gone, then maybe she'll remember her grandpa. Who knows? I certainly don't. Not in this crazy mixed up world in the life of Bill. Or as I say, in the world according to Bill, and I'm the only one who lives in my happy little world. So I just kind of got to a point in life where I started doing things that make me happy and hopefully it makes other people happy along the way. And if it don't, well, I'm still happy. So that's all that matters. At work, I've kind of adopted the moniker crotchety old man for myself. You know, I'm getting to that point in life where I'm tired and fed up with a lot of things and don't like a lot of... Uh, internal office politics and things going on, so I always tell people, be careful what you ask me because you're going to get an answer and it may, might just not be the one you're looking for, but it's going to be the one that's right as far as I'm concerned. So, I'm the crotchety old man. I got a year or two to go till I retire. I'll be up on my little homestead in Alaska doing my little thing and enjoying what's left of the rest of my life. 
So hopefully all of y'all can respect that. We're getting close now. See again, it's, it's kind of bunching up a little bit, but that's all right. It's going to do that. This is not a fancy high dollar, uh, you know, set of moccasins. Uh, you know, no super fancy $1,500 stitching machine. Like I said, literally all the pieces to make this are in the bag. You don't have to go out and buy anything. Now, I happen to prefer using my X-Acto knife for cutting the loose tags pieces of this string off, this thread off, when I get to doing the inside piece here, the tie. Other than that, this is simple. If the crazy old lone moose can do it, y'all can do it. You don't say, oh, you've been doing this all your life. No, I did this when I was a, in my teens, in my early 20s, and then didn't touch leather work for 40-some years. All right, now, you see how we just came through the last one? But we got to get this thread back in there. So for that same last loop, I'm going to go back through the white part only, feed this up, Okay, now here's where it gets to be dicey for man with fat old fingers. Hopefully in here you can see we've got, where's my exacto knife, it's easier to point with this. Okay, we've got the original string that we ran through and the second one. So we're going to pull these out. I'm actually going to cut this down, I don't need that much to get in my way. Make it a little easier. How many of you remember from your old days how to make a square knot? All right? Simple. Left over right and under. And we're going to pull it tight all the way down to the inside. And this wax thread, you know, it's not going to slip and come apart on you. All right, so we did left over right. Now you take right over left and under. Hold that tight. It's not there yet. Ugh. All right. When you get that done, I take my X-Acto knife. Get this where you can hopefully see some of it. I know you won't be able to see all of it, but I get it right up to the edge of the knot and cut. And ouch! Turn it around where it's a little easier to work with right up to the other side of the knot. Cut! Done! We interrupt this video to bring you an urgent, important announcement. I screwed up. Okay, The way you just saw the moccasin there after I cut the strings with the flaps folded to the outside is the way it's supposed to be, not folded to the inside. That's not saying you couldn't do it that way if you wanted to, but, you know, like most real men, who reads all the instructions anyway, right? So, I was just about ready to give them to the kids, and I noticed, oops, so I quickly fixed it, and the photographs that follow here is how it really should have been, and the bow, you just run the pink leather through the two holes, tie it in a nice little bow, and you're ready to go. So, you know how I, how I do things. If I screw up, I tell you, and this was one of mine. So, meanwhile, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Now, next thing we got to do, put the, lace, the lace in here. So, basically, again, run it through, run it from the inside out. Where'd my hole go? Hello. There's the hole. Come on, get through there. Boom. All right. Now what you do at this point, roughly speaking, zoom this back out where I can get a little more. This part right here, 
folds in and down over the string. We'll now pull some of that string back out of here. That lace. And this is where I said earlier, uh, before I give this to Miranda, uh, I am going to take and put a little dab of glue inside of here and inside of here on those two wings. And that way when the baby's foot goes in and out, it won't uh, hang up on there. And then basically just, see that's why, it keeps popping out of there. Tie a nice little bow, which again is very hard to do for someone like me with old fat fingers. Yeah. And we have one each pair of Grandpa made leather moccasins for new baby Ezra. Now I hope you all enjoyed this video. I know it was a little on the long side and tedious, but I wanted you to uh, you know see the process. And it's simple. Anybody can do it. If I can do it, y'all can do it. Uh, so, you know, I highly encourage you to, uh, you know, if you have any interest in doing leather work at all, reach out, you know, check out Tandy, Tandy I think it's Tandy.com or TandyLeather.com. they got all kinds of real easy kits. The kits come with great instructions. Uh, I've got a couple other kits that uh, I'm going to be making also videos of here in the next few weeks. Uh, so kind of stay tuned for that. If you like my videos, you know, please hit the like and subscribe. You hit the notify bell, you'll know when I post more videos. Um, you know, if you have any thoughts or questions, comments, please leave them below. You know, share, feel free to share this with your friends or post it to Facebook or whatever you want to do. Uh, you know, I'm, we're all in this together. <coughs> My job is to share what little bit I know about things with y'all, and y'all's job is to give me feedback on, excuse me, feedback on it, and tell me what you think of my videos. So, with that said, I am going to. Uh, find my glue for this, go in the house, glue it together, and then I'm going to go give them to Miranda so she'll have it ready to take to the hospital when they go, uh, you know, very, very early Monday morning. Uh, this is Lone Moose out. I'll see y'all when I do my next video.